we are picking up where we left off on page two of our notes, um, where we had just finished talking about how if something is stable, that means it has a full valence shell. And to remind you what a valence shell is, that is just the outermost shell of your electrons, or it's the one that's furthest from the nucleus. I'm gonna pause this real quick so we can pull down. And then something that we need to remember is that most atoms need eight valence electrons to have a full valence shell. Um, we'll talk a lot more about this later on, but it's because of what we call the S sublevel and the P sublevel. Those are our valence um, orbitals. We'll talk about them in our electron unit, but for now, just remember most, most atoms need eight electrons in their valence shell to be stable unless they're in energy level one, and in that case, they need two. So I'll remind you of it as we keep going. Um, we are going to draw a Bohr model for a sodium-23 atom. So looking at sodium on our periodic table, it is right here, number 11. So what does that 11 tell us about the subatomic particles in sodium? Protons. So that, this means that we have 11 protons. Those protons are going to be housed in my nucleus. So 11 protons in the nucleus. And then what else will be in the nucleus with the protons? Neutrons. From this, there is nothing that we can conclude about the neutrons. However, if it says sodium 23, remember that that 23 represents the mass number. And your mass number is your number of protons plus your number of neutrons. So working backwards, if I have my number of protons and I have my mass number, I can subtract 23 minus 11 to give me my number of neutrons. If you can't do 23 minus 11 in your head, use a calculator. And what is that? <coughs> Perfect. So in my nucleus of this sodium-23 atom, I have 11 protons and 12 neutrons. The fact that it is an atom, when we see that word atom, this tells us that it is electrically neutral. Neutral means no charge. And what that means in terms of our particles is that our positive charges will equal our negative charges. To be specific, our protons, which are our positive particles, will equal our electrons, or the number of each will be the same. That is what neutral means. So if I have 11 protons, then how many electrons must I have? Also 11. So I know I'm going to have 11 electrons. And then I'm going to zoom this out so we can talk about it on our periodic tables. If I'm trying to get to sodium that has 11 protons and if it's a neutral atom, it's going to have 11 electrons, I have to go through all of the energy levels and all of the spots for electrons that come before it. So this 3 on the side here tells me that sodium is in energy level 3, which means I'm going to have 3 rings. And so on this, I already gave you your 3 rings. The other thing that we know is that in energy level one, it's going to be completely full to get to sodium. So I have two electrons in energy level one. In energy level two, I would have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, a full energy level two. And then in energy level three, I can hold up to eight electrons, but for sodium, I would only have one electron in energy level three. So that third energy level is only going to have one electron in it. Do you see where I got that from our periodic table? I'll keep explaining it as we do other examples, but for now, let's go ahead and draw this one. So in energy level one, like I said, we have two electrons. This also matches this little bit at the top where it goes two, eight, eight, 18. So energy level one has two electrons. Energy level two can hold up to eight and it is going to be full. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put one on each side first and then I start pairing them up. Um, we'll talk about why that is on the next page of notes. And then the last electron, so so far I did two electrons in energy level one, eight electrons in energy level two, so that gives me a total of 10 electrons, but I said I needed 11. That 11th one is in the third energy level all by itself. So if I'm looking at this, as a reminder, valence electrons are your outermost electrons in the outermost shell here. So in my outermost shell, which is the third energy level for sodium, how many electrons do I have? I'm going to ask that question again. So I'm looking for how many valence electrons sodium has. Valence electrons meaning the number of electrons in the furthest shell from the nucleus. Just one. So I just have one valence electron. And then instead of going to the right, we're just going to go straight down and do the atoms. So my next Bohr model is going to be for an atom with three protons and a mass number of five AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit. We'll talk more about that as well, but that's just the unit that we use to measure atomic mass. So if I have three protons, they're definitely going to be housed in the nucleus. I can draw those right there. What else will be in the nucleus? Neutrons. If you have three protons, which element are you? So which element on your periodic table has three protons? Lithium. lithium. So if we're looking at lithium, its atomic number is three. So if something has three protons, that means it's lithium. So I'm going to write that. If it's an atom, this means the same thing that we wrote up here, which is that it is neutral and the number of protons will equal the number of electrons. So I'm going to just write that out here. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. So since it has three protons, I know that it's also going to have three electrons. And the number of neutrons, we have to get from subtracting our mass number minus the number of protons. So five minus three gives me how many neutrons? <coughs> two. So I have two neutrons in my nucleus. And then I already gave you the correct number of rings, but just to remind you where this comes from. Lithium is right here on our periodic table, but to get to number three, you have to go through all of the numbers that come before it. So in energy level one, lithium would have two electrons because there are two boxes in energy level one. And then in energy level two, we can have up to eight electrons, but lithium is only at the beginning, so it just has one electron in energy level two. So I'm going to zoom back in, draw this. Two electrons in energy level one, and just one electron in energy level two. So we have all three of our electrons. They're just spread out among different energy levels or different orbitals. Yes? How you what, the electrons? Um, it doesn't necessarily matter what order. So on any orbital, that's a good question. So the question was, does it matter where you put the electrons or how you arrange them? I always will put one in each spot, like north, south, east, and west. It doesn't matter what order you do it, as long as you do one, two, three, four, and then start pairing them up. Um, I always try to separate it just so you can see the difference. So I put this one kind of in like a weird spot so that it wasn't right next to that one. Um, but yeah, so one on each side. And then if you have to have a second one, then you'll start pairing them up. And then the reason for that we'll talk about in the next section that talks about Lewis dot diagrams. Um, it will become important when we talk about bonding. And then I'm going to ask the same question on this one. How many valence electrons does lithium have? How many valence electrons does lithium have? One. Just one. So this also has just one valence electron. So that outermost shell, 
the furthest energy level from my nucleus has just one electron in it. So since this has one valence electron and this has one valence electron, we're going to start trying to notice some patterns. We did sodium and then lithium. Notice that they're in the same column on our periodic table. If we were to draw, let me make sure it's not on here. Um, if we were to draw the Bohr model for potassium, which is the next one down on that same, um, in that same family or in that same column, we would have to go through all of this, all of this, all of this. And in my fourth energy level, notice my fourth energy level would be my furthest away from the nucleus, would also have just one electron. So we're using our periodic table as what we'll refer to later as an electron map to tell us where all the electrons are likely to be. And then the last one we're going to do um, for now is draw a Bohr model for an atom with 16 protons, 16 neutrons, and 16 electrons. So if it's an atom, that tells us protons equal electrons, but I also gave you the numbers, so it's neutral. If you have 16 protons, who are you? Sulfur. It says right here we have 16 electrons and 16 neutrons, so there's no math that needs to happen. You can just copy that there. And then we start filling in our energy levels. The other thing that matters about the arrangement is that you always start with the innermost one. I guess when you submit completed work to me, I don't know which one you actually started by drawing, but your lower energy levels have to be full before you make it to higher energy levels. Energy level one is full with just two electrons. Energy level two can hold up to how many? Eight. So one, two, three, four. And then I start pairing them. Five, six, seven, eight. And then in so after I did one and two, that's two electrons plus eight electrons, which gives me 10. I still need to keep going until I get 16 electrons. So how many electrons will I draw on that third energy level? Six. Six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then how many valence electrons does sulfur have? Six. Perfect. Before we move on from this, I just wanted to talk briefly about um, the other side of these, which is ions. So I'll keep that kind of in the view. We're not going to draw these because I think that it might be just a little bit too complex for how far we've gone so far. We will learn how to draw ions, um, but at this point in time, um, this would maybe be kind of our score four area. Um, if you are able to draw an ion. So the reason that things form ions is to become stable. And what stable means is a full valence shell. The two ways that you can become stable are by gaining electrons or losing electrons. Later on, we'll talk about possibly sharing electrons, but that's a different story. Um, and so what atoms are going to do is whatever is easiest meaning moving the least number of electrons. So for example, if you have one valence electron, your options to become stable if your valence shell is energy level three are you would need eight electrons in energy level three to be stable, or if you lose that one electron, then that entire energy level goes away and you only have energy levels one and two, and energy level two would already have been full because that's how you got up to energy level three. So an um, ion for sodium, would have one less electron. So that means that it lost an electron. So when you draw it, instead of having 11 electrons, it would have just 10 electrons. But because it's sodium, it still has 11 protons. It has 12 neutrons because it tells you that. And so what this would look like is I would have two electrons in my first energy level, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in my second energy level. Because I have a full valence shell, that means that this ion is stable, which is the ultimate goal, but the number of energy levels that it's actually showing looks a little bit different. 
This one would do something very similar. The only difference is that energy level one can only hold two electrons. And then down here, if I have six valence electrons, instead of losing all six of those electrons and dropping down to the lower energy level, it would gain two electrons. So when it says common ion, it would gain two electrons to make that third energy level full. So it would end up having, instead of 16 electrons, if I gained two, that would mean 18 electrons. But it's still sulfur, so it still has 16 protons. And it says 17 neutrons here, so it would have 17 neutrons. And then again, your 18 would be here. You would end up being stable because you have a full valence shell. So if you didn't follow that last part, if talking about the ions was really confusing for you, um, don't worry about it. We will learn it later. Um, but if you feel like you have a good grasp of where these Bohr models are coming from and all of that, then um, that is something that you can do to demonstrate a score for for the atomic structure unit. Yes, question? Um, how do we know how many electrons we gain or lose? So it is always the goal to become stable, which means full valence shell, whatever that is. In most energy levels, so when I say most atoms need eight valence electrons, this is for all energy levels, except for level one. Uh, I'm gonna say first. Except for the first orbital, because that one only needs two to be stable. So what ends up happening is if you have less than four valence electrons, you'll end up losing your electrons to become stable because less than four makes it just easier to lose them. If you have more than four, then you end up gaining electrons to become stable. And if you have exactly four, then you can technically do either one. Good question. Um, so that's why this is kind of like higher level stuff. Again, if it doesn't make sense at this point, we haven't talked about um, charges and ions and all of that very much. Um, so we will touch on that a lot later but just like to preview it because it's in here. So I'm gonna stop this video here.